Hi, welcome back to Empower Your Parent Voice, What You Need to Know to Be Your Child's Best Advocate. I'm Pat Minishak, and... I'm Diane Canava. Nice to see you again. And this is um, Series 2, Episode 1, uh, and the title of this presentation today is uh, Developing a Knowledgeable Parent Voice. Um, it's going to be really covering a topic on what we could like to think of as personal groundwork. It's some of the personal growth that you know we need to do and take and uh, to, into our own lives when we uh, need to make some changes. And we like to start off with the little words of wisdom for the day um, to help drive our discussion. And I'm just going to read it to you. Uh, your position as a knowledgeable, proactive parent affords you a unique opportunity to be a key player and work collaboratively with your child's team members. And I think that's a huge piece uh, for parents to think of themselves as a collaborative team member when they're working with their child's team and their educational uh, programming. And it's not just uh, a one-shot deal, like we mentioned the other day. It's, it's actually a, a lifetime process of uh, working with your child and the members of uh, their programs that they, they will have throughout their life. Um, our first episode, we talked a little bit, uh, uh, we had a presentation that there were some probing questions for parents that we had asked in the very end of our segment. And it was really to um, help you assess your current knowledge and skills in becoming your child's best advocate. Uh, and so at this point, I think what we'd like to do is just kind of revisit some of the information that we had discussed um, in that first little segment that we asked you to kind of reflect on. Um, it's really to help you, to encourage you actually to look at your child in a holistic way. Um, and what we mean by that really is uh, looking at them, um, all the aspects that encompass their social, emotional, their cognitive, physical, uh, medical, and educational development. Um, and I think at this point, Diane's going to take a look at some of those things that we had asked you to, to reflect on. Well, we feel it's very important that from last week when you had to gather your information and assess your skills and answer those questions that you think of your child's needs and relationship to um, your own instincts and how you are prepared to uh, fulfill your child's needs. And the questions were... Um, why don't Thanks. I take a look at those yeah, for you? Yeah, I don't have to. Um, first of all, we wanted you to think of yourself as projecting, do you project a positive attitude, a, pro, pro, a positive proactive attitude when you're either talking with team members or even, even with your child to help discuss some of their program or their, when you're communicating with them. And the next one was, how effective are you at your communication skills? And, and remember, these are things that we are going to cover later on when we start to talk about these different personal skills. Um, how, how good at you are you at resolving conflicts peacefully? And do you consider yourself part of the problem or do you consider yourself part of the solution? Um, and here's, here's another one. It's, um, do you possess a realistic grasp of your child's ability? And you know, so many times we, we think of our child and we think they're the best thing, and most of the time they are. But can you realistically step back and say, this is what my child is capable of at this point? And I think that's, that's a big piece right there, don't you? When you say, at this point, what is my child capable of? Um, and do you base your decisions when we're talking with people, whether it's you know, team members, school personnel, your, your, your doctor, actually, for your child? You know, do you base decisions and your comments on you know, some real knowledge, um, the most current research, um, the most current information that's available? And that, that, again, that takes a little bit of work. Um, and do you know the appropriate services that are available and the procedures that are available for your child? You know, whatever your child needs, are you able to say, I know that there's something out there for that child, and do you know what's available, and do you know the right contacts? Mm. And so that's what we were asking yeah. the parents to do, is to take a look at themselves and say, where am I? Yes, an effective advocate should be someone who comes in equipped with as much knowledge and research and feeling as possible. Only you know your child. You know your child the best of anyone else, and you should um, guide your 
communication skills and, and the way you present yourself with the idea of I'm representing my child and I want to present that kind of profile and this is what my child needs at this point and back it up with the information you have or resources you have and cite the law if you need to and those are the kind of the things that you need to have current knowledge and some personal skill ability which we're going to go into deeply about how do you tone up those skills and how do you become more confident in what you do representing your child. Right, and how, how can you actually make yourself be the best person that you can um, because you, you are like that first line of defense when you're going after you know what your child actually requires to be the best person that they can be also. Yeah, because yeah, you're bringing in that unconditional love that you have for your child from the, from the cradle. And um, you love your child, you want to keep them safe, you want to keep them comfortable, and the needs go momentarily for the child's sake, but for your sake, the needs are very global. And that's why we say we want you to understand the holistic approach to your child and what your child's needs are, socially, emotionally, physically, mentally, cognitively, all the growth and development um, goals you may have for your child. Right, looking at the child as a, a whole entity. And I think that that word holistic, you know, it's used in a lot of different ways, but I think the importance of um, looking at it in, a, in a, the large picture is what we want to be able to get across to the parents to be able to say, what does my child need? Yeah. And they now. grow so fast. Yeah, you're you right. Know, and what they are at three months is not what they are at six months. What they are at one year is not what they are at four years. You know, even the teenage years, the, between the junior and high school is not like they were when they were um, a freshman. So you really have to be, you know, close, close with your child and watching them and, and also feeling your heart as the mother or the father and saying, gee, something's not right here and I need to step up to the plate. Okay, uh, today, today what we're going to be discussing um, will highlight the importance of developing your initial aspects of it, the knowledgeable parent voice. And, and we said we are going to get into how we can look at ourselves, how mm -hmm. we can change what we need to change in order for us to get the most out of, I want to say, anybody and anything. Right. Don't you, right. don't you think? I think change is important and it's a scary word. And we like to sort of allay some of your fears about that idea of changing because it will benefit you and your child as you go through that process. So this is kind of like... Um, what you need to know and be able to do to mm. be your best. Right. And then we expect you to kind of carry it over into your everyday life so that, you know, it's like anything else. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. You know, we all crawled before we could, you know, walk and then run. Mm. So it's like any new skill that you're going to learn, or maybe, I shouldn't even say learn, but to revisit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you were talking about revisiting or learning new skills, you know, it's the whole aspect of change. And, and looking at with a good positive attitude. Yes. Good positive attitude. Um, now, having the knowledgeable parent voice affords you that unique opportunity, which we said before. It's helping you to be able to work collaboratively with your child's team and the people that are directly involved in your child. And, and don't just think of it as the school. We're talking about it as their friends, the, the teachers. Um, it could be the bus driver, it could be the, your child's doctor, it doesn't matter. Um, we want you to view yourself as a key player in their life, because you are, naturally. It's just a natural role that you take on when you become a parent. You are your child's best advocate, and we want to give you those tools mm. to, to be able to you know, rise you to the top of being the best of the best. Mm. Because you don't even realize how many times a day you're a key decision maker in your child's life. You are constantly problem, problem solving. Um, they look at you as the model, and um, like Patty said, you need to revisit some of the things you've done and give yourself kudos for it, because practice makes perfect. Take your time, one step, um, and change is going to be one of the first steps we're going to talk about today. And, and one more little thing before we move on. It says, you know, we, we want to make sure that, you, we've said it before, but we say it again, um, who does know your child better, better than, than you? Better than you. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think there is anybody that does. Um, and, and remember, when you or your child are in need of change, then you need to find those pieces, those key pieces that mm -hmm. are going to help bring you through to be able to become the best person that you can be. Okay, now what we'd like to do here is, again, you need to allow yourself to change in a positive way, positively influencing 
your frame of mind when you're making decisions or making or or you have problems. So remember, keeping a positive attitude is is like the overarching theme of what we're trying to say here for you. It's your attitude and how you can keep that positive enough so that even, you know, when you take a look at why people need to change, it's either a positive thing or a negative thing that kind of like is that little thorn in your side that makes you want to change to begin with, right? Exactly. Now, um, you, and when you do change, you need to adapt to the situation at hand. So if you're taking that whole concept and thinking, you know, everyone says, oh, you know, you can't change any of everyone else. You can only change yourself. And, and I agree with that. Well, but you, you reflect where you are. You're not the same place you were yesterday or last month or a year. You are changing. Life is ever changing. That's right. Now, let's take a look at what we call the five C's of change. Now, the five C's of change, um, you know, we're going to go through why people change, why you need to change, and, and those little aspects of why it's important in your life. And if we look at the very first piece of the five C's of change, the word is actually conflict. And when you think of conflict, automatically you're thinking negative. Don't you agree? Oh, I think conflict makes you feel like, uh-oh. Something's wrong. Something's not right. I have to fight. It's a battle. I mean, conflict is not a positive um, outcome, is it? No, to, to most people, but, but it can be. You know, the whole if, thing of a conflict, again, it's kind of like, you know, why do you need to change? Is it because it, you don't agree with something, or is it, is it something that's going to make life better, or is it's it going to... It's a stressful situation. Right. And, and remember, when we go into whatever situation we're talking about, whether it's school or the doctor or whatever, remember, you all go in with what we call baggage. And, and I'm sure you've all heard that. Baggage is something that if I'm going into, say the school system and I need to talk about my child's program. You know, you reflect on all the things that, that give you that feeling of why you have either a negative or a positive feeling and you bring that in with you. Mm. So if you're already starting off on a negative note for yourself, it's very difficult to, to you know, get that positive result that you're looking for when you already are, are creating a negative feeling for yourself and for others. Yeah. So try and set that baggage aside so that they're able to then go on to the next piece, which is to leave, that, leave it open, leave it positive. Um, and remember, when we're looking at conflict, we want that win-win resolution. Mm. We want to win. Not that you know, it beats everybody else down, but the fact that it's important to understand that you, know, you may not agree with what other people say, but you can live with it. And I think that's important. Um, and deal with reality. We don't do that. Sometimes we think we're looking for pie in the sky and you're talking, you know, they're able to give you the pie but mm -hmm. not in the sky. You know, so, um, and utilize the effective communication when talking about conflict resolution or resolving, you know, the conflict in your life. Um, okay, the next one that we're going down to is um, after conflict becomes confidence. Um, and and the, the key word in, in confidence in uh, the five C's of change is, is knowing in yourself that you can make a difference. You can make a difference in your life. You can make a difference in your child's life simply by doing some minor tweaking or having people work with you positively. Um, and and we, have, we, we love this little thing that we've always worked with. It. And, and when we were teaching, we used to teach the kids this. Is it's called the five, C, the, the, um, the five mm -hmm. P's. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. when we're talking about being confident, usually it's because we feel confident in ourselves because we come prepared. Mm. So if you can think of the five P's as, as simple as proper preparation prevents poor performance. performance. You know, that is like so important in anyone's life, even in your child's life. You know, I don't care what the assignment is, I don't care what the situation is, if you properly prepare for something, you will perform better. So that's something that we're going to ask people to, you know, we'll revisit that along the mm -hmm. way. You know, and that's a good thing to ask yourself, did I properly prepare if something doesn't go right? And sometimes you start at ground level with your mindset, come in with a healthy mindset, come in with the reason why you want to walk in there. You know, present yourself um, with courage and, oh, that's the next one, isn't That it? is the next yep. one. The good job. Leading right, right with the courage. That. Be a risk taker. Yes. Don't be afraid to take a risk. You know, it may not be something that you're familiar with, but it's something that might work. So that's what we're saying. Um, take, be, have courage to take that risk. And then the next one is huge, commitment. You know, you may go in like gangbusters trying to get some kind of a, a you know, a betterment in the program for your child. 
And you know, we all start out, and we're, we're committed because it's our child. But then, as time goes on, you kind of peter out, and you can't do that. You know, it's, you know, it's your child. It's what you want and what your child needs. And if you go in there with a gangbuster attitude and a good one, positive, you're good. But then as it goes on, if you peter out, so doesn't the efforts on many people's part. It's almost like, you know, and we will talk about this later, is mm. getting in the moment and keeping that moment on mentally and physically. It's important to keep that up. And then let's go into the last one. It's called community. And that is... Um, you have to be a collaborative team member, a collaborative person. Look to work cooperatively with uh, any team members or responsible people that are in charge of your child's program. Be a collaborative person, somebody that works cooperatively. Yeah, don't work in isolation. Have your own support system if you need to. Reach out to someone you feel confident about that can help you. And um, seek their guidance. Um, get an advocate if you need to do so. But when you go in, you remember, you are a team member. You are just as equally important in the process as everyone else sitting at that table. And, uh, and the other thing that we were saying is um, you need to avoid being a reactive change mm -hmm. person. If you're reacting to the change rather than being proactive in the change, like I said, you're already starting out in a negative mode. And that reflects on everything you do and everything that you say and how you think of what the the outcome is going to be. Right. So it's important to stay positive and be in control. Once you lose control, then you've given that control up in the situation to someone else, and that's mm. not a good thing. Um, yeah, you should ask yourself, what's your definition of change? Is it a negative feeling you have socially, emotionally, physically, mentally? And um, this morning I had a little extra time on my hands, so I looked up the <laughs> definition for change. and. It's to cause a difference, and that's what you want to do. That is your goal, to cause a difference. Something needs to be different here. And it also talks about an appearance or a form of appearance. That's the change you need to have. You feel better about yourself. You're confident. You have the courage. Um, you can take care of those conflicts. You'll know how to do it in a positive way where it's a win-win situation. And it also talks about a fresh covering. You want to feel fresh and new and revitalized. And it's all in that slow process um, that takes one step at a time, a one step at a time approach, little by little, practice each day. It, it takes time. Before you know it, time has passed and you'll see yourself a fresh new being with a lot of skills. And remember, as good parents, we learn new skills and we model them for our children. Those things are extremely important. If you want your child to, to act a certain way, then it's important for you to model those behaviors. Mm -hmm. And when we're asking now for you to you know, take a look at your skill levels and, and we're going to help you to improve your skill levels, it's important for you to model those daily for your child to see that and will then take on that whole persona of being whatever it is you're trying yeah. to create. Be true and to yourself. And hopefully positive. Yep, be true to yourself, be consistent. You know, make the commitment, like we said, one of the C's is commitment. Commit to yourself as well as to others. You know, you have to work on you before you can work on your child. And that's another whole part of what we're going to be talking about in the future. But we're not going to just leave you out there and say change. We're going to help you step by step one little bit at a time. Perfect. One step at a time. Yeah. Huge. That's so important because if you if you try and take on too many of these things at once, once it becomes very overwhelming. And then it's like anything else. You get overwhelmed and you, what happens? You start to shut down. That's right. not what you we give want. Up. We want you to be able yeah. to absorb the information, practice it in the daily, you know, and then you model it and your child will take it on. And, and every, every, every chance you get, try it. Try it. Um, we're going to move on now, um, kind of close this up for today, but we're going to be, tr obviously, before we go on, we have to go into the mini can. Our mini can questions are important to us, and they're important to you, because what we do is it gives us an opportunity to speak directly to the people who have written questions to us, and we try and keep it so that it, it's geared to either what we're talking about today or kind of foreshadowing for the things to come in the future. And that's, that's great. So um, the last question from last time it had talked about um, organizational skills for parents. What can we do, what can I do as a parent was the question to become better organized. And what we chose to do was bring you um, a sample of how parents can become 
better organized than anything um, would be to do something like this. Um, this was actually um, retrieved from one of our parents that has taken on um, this way to organize all of her child's materials. Um, and this is actually broken down better in our book, uh, Empower Your Parent Voice, What You Need to Know to Be Your Child's Best Advocate. And this is actually one of the steps that we've actually um, talked about in developing this organizational notebook for parents. And it, in the book, it actually goes step by step and it actually shows you how to break this down. Because we want it to be a working organizational notebook that you will utilize to be able to monitor your child and your child's progress and um, everything else that you, you need to know and be able to do to, to keep your child's records and correspondence. Um, she did a great job, by the way, Diane. Good job getting that from her to let us show people. And we, we want your child to be a real person, and that's why we always suggest put their picture on the front. When you walk into any meeting, your child's a reality, and she's right there or he's right there. So you're not just talking about paper and pencil. You're talking about a real, live human being that needs something at that moment. Yeah, we like to remind everybody. Yeah. We like to remind everybody that it's not just a name. It is the person that they're discussing. And, you know, keep that right in front of everybody, right every time you do your meetings with, with um, the school systems. Okay, today's mini, uh, mini cam question. Um, here's the question. After I attend any meeting at my child's school, it seems I always go away, go home, and think of several questions that I would like someone to answer for me. I feel like I never have enough time to process all the information. And, and boy, that, that is so true. I mean, I know myself even in regular meetings mm -hmm. that that's not, you know, that's, that's the same problem. There's the five Ps again. Yeah. Yep. So but proper preparation prevents poor performance. But um, a couple of suggestions. First of all, as soon as you, you think, I mean, even take time in your car to digest what it is that went on mm -hmm. in the meeting. And write down anything that you feel you felt comfortable with, you felt uncomfortable with, and then any key words that'll help to remind you of things that you, uh, and you actually you can do some of that right in the meeting when you're at the meetings, mm -hmm. but um, any key words that you may have writ written down in your meeting, mm -hmm. you know, write down that question. Mm -hmm right or, away or anything you felt you should have done you had that feeling that's part of that change you know be a risk taker open your mouth nothing you say not one thing you say will be taken lightly it's important you're the parent because you know that child as well as the person you're talking to and together you should be collaborating prioritize those concerns you may have when you walk out of that meeting and say who do I ask this question to? Maybe the, another person needs to answer this other question. Maybe you need to sit down with a team of people. The important thing is to get your, qu your questions answered and get them answered quickly for you. And while Don't still sit on it. Yeah, do not sit on it. And you can call on a tele the telephone. You can do an email electronically. Everything is so pop quick these days. Okay, um, not to rush it along, but uh, some of the things we'd like to talk about for next week. Mm. Um, we, we would like you to tune in next time for some more in-depth personal skills development to help level the playing field when you are working with those members of a team and you're trying to do it collaboratively. So we are going to be covering some of the information um, to help you to develop those personal skills, and we're going to break it down so that it's easy for you to follow. Uh, some closing words that we're, you know, we'd like to... I, I want to say words to live by, um, and that is be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Mm -hmm. So learn and do what it is you need to be able to do to be the best collaborative partner for your child's education in their future. Um, so what we'd like to do in closing is remind you a few things. We have our book. It's entitled Empower Your Parent Voice, What You Need to Know to Be Your Child's Best Advocate. You can, you can purchase this book through our f Facebook page, um, Powerful Parent Voice. Also, you can email us at parentvoiceaol.com. Any question you ask us, if you want it to be personalized, we can do that personally. Through the AOL. If, you, if you'd like it to be part of the minicam and share it on the air, we can do that also if it's a process or references you need. 
but check our Facebook page especially because we have all kinds of helpful hints there. Um, we just went through Halloween time and changing the clocks, all kinds of things they may be of need for you at the moment. Normal things you probably don't have time to even think about, but when you read it, you go, oh yes, I've already done that, oh yes, I can do that easily. And um, like I say, Patty and I will be on here again and again and again, and I'm gonna get more excited because we're getting into stuff that I really like to sit down and say, hey, you can do this, all right? So uh, we hope to see you next time, and um, like I said, contact us and feel free. Whatever you ask us is not insignificant. Thanks, bye-bye.